fostering the STEM pipeline from a grade school to their first job. It gives kids equal access to this growing career opportunity. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Erin LeBeau. And I'm Tamson Fidel. Well, STEM-related careers rising. The demand for qualified workers keeps going up so much that the talent pool of available workers just cannot keep up. Yeah, a major reason why could be that some groups of kids are left out of the lesson plans. So joining us now to talk more about it is Dr. Lena Bakshi McLean, founder of the nonprofit learning organization STEM for Real. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So let's jump right in. What is the school to STEM career pipeline and what does it look like at a typical public school? Yes, absolutely. When we look at the STEM, the school to STEM career pipeline, yeah. we're asking ourselves, what are the schools and the districts doing to prepare a student to go all the way from kindergarten to a STEM career? So when we look at that pipeline, we want to ask ourselves, where are the gaps? Where are the leaks? And how are we losing our students? Who are we losing? And what can we do as an education community to rectify that? Well, let me ask you this. Why are some kids left out of the conversation altogether when it comes to STEM? That is a difficult question that we need to ask ourselves. And one of the things is that we have to address the implicit bias that exists, especially when we're as adults going into these schools and, and these districts, and we're making these generalizations and these assumptions on whether a student should study STEM or not. We have a tendency to categorize our students. You're an English learner. You're a special education student. And when we have these labels on our students, mm -hmm. we tend to associate them with, well, maybe you shouldn't study STEM, or maybe you, know, you haven't performed well in math before. Maybe it's not for you and we're essentially making these assumptions based on the implicit biases that we carry. Okay so doctor what else would you say needs to or has to change to allow kids from all background backgrounds excuse me to have this equal opportunity? We have to make sure that in the conversations that we're having with our students and our young people that they have to know that they can do it. That we don't want to make that decision for them. And that's exactly what's happening. We're coming in and we're saying, hmm, maybe you should study this instead, or maybe engineering isn't for you. And we can't have that, no matter what. Even when we hear people say, hmm, I'm not a math person. Mm -hmm. No, you are a person, you can do math, you're a math person, just like that. And I think that once we dismantle this idea that I'm not a math person, I can't do it, we'll be able to reach more of our students and have a growing community that amplifies students of color, that amplifies women in STEM, and be able to have that flourishing and diverse community. I'm curious about this. Is there also a way to put STEM into perspective for parents who may be from a, an older generation and might not understand what STEM is and why it's so important? Definitely. And as a parent myself, it's all about being able to foster that curiosity in our students and have them ask questions. What's behind social media? What's behind some of these dating apps that are out there? Who creates them and how do we create them? And really fostering that. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, we had the space race, and that was informing education policy to say, hey, get more of our students in science and in STEM. And we can't wait for the next space race or the nuclear arms race. We have to prioritize STEM, and it really starts with our parents. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest that parents ask their teachers, especially in elementary, are you teaching science every day? Because that's <laughs> the best way we can prioritize. Yeah, I love when I see students in those robotics uh, competitions yeah, and things like that. Yeah, of course. Okay, so what are some of the career opportunities available in STEM? That's the beauty about STEM. STEM is everywhere, from the video and audio visuals that are creating this very program to looking at artificial intelligence and medicine. I had a cousin write an app that swiped for him for his dating app, and oh, next wow. thing you know, he ended up married. So <laughs> wow. there's so much of, of STEM in our everyday lives, and it's really up to us to make it relevant. So is there anything parents can do to help inspire kids when, you know, they're not at school, but when they're at home? I think at 
home, it's all about that curiosity, that tinkering, you know, get an old toy and take it apart and figure out what's going on or have those dinner table conversations where you're wondering like, what is the algorithm behind all of these advertisements? Or, you know, how can I use artificial intelligence and, and robotics? What if I could have a robot do my cleaning? I think it's these everyday conversations mm -hmm. that can make it relevant for our mm -hmm. students and it gets them excited to stay. But I think the most important part is to know that they belong in STEM and every single student should have that sense of belong belonging that this is for me and this is something I can do. And, and also understand what STEM is and that it, it really does touch everything. It's, you know, it's everywhere. Most everywhere. of the things you use in yeah. your day to day yeah. are, involves STEM, so. All right. Exactly, it's everywhere. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having me. All right, if you would like more information on her organization, you can go to stemforreal.org.